a book I have written called Why Things Won't Work in Kenya, I've said Vision 3020. You know, they forgot. <laughs> 2030, it was 3020. The rate at which we are going, even by the year 3020, we will not have achieved. It is not really. It's not, I mean, what are we doing? We can give water to those people without these shallow, mm. shady schemes, people. Actually, Manjira, you get ma you get money, then you go and do some vegetable thing, then you pump some little water with <laughs> weak pipes. Then when they are even the sun alone, the, the the pipes burst, and then you go away. You have eaten the money. So long as those Bowsers still control this town, there will never be sanity in the water sector in the in the city of Nairobi. You must put an end. If I'm in charge today, not one of them will be on the road in 30 days. None of them, not one. I see. Look for me, do to me what you want. I'm an old man. None of you will sell those things to do other works. When you use the military and the youth service to do work, where are you leaving the contractors? Where are you leaving the thieves? They will not be happy with you. Because they want you to allow them to do that and they steal the money. Because if military is given an assignment to drill boreholes, they will do exactly that. With the limited they will, money they will be given. They will not be people will not allow that. In as much as water remains a pivotal economic resource, Kenya continues to remain a water-scarce country. Now, how do we best address the subject of water availability and accessibility here in Kenya? My name is Richard Mwenja, your host here on Business Glide, and I'm truly humbled that you've joined us on board. And right about now, to help me dissect into this subject is none other than renowned public scholar, Haman Manyora. Great to see you, sir. Uh, how are you, Richard? I'm quite well. How Good. about you? Wonderful. I see. Wonderful. Well, uh, we are looking at uh, the Kenyan population being uh, slightly over 48 million and we're still grappling with the issue of water availability and accessibility at it. Would you say that probably with regards to water policies, uh, they are somewhat uh, conflicting, perhaps why we haven't realized uh, the goal of having every Kenyan access water? I don't know that there are policies and if there are policies, they are not being implemented. When I was a young man, many, many, many years ago, I used to hear water for all by the year 1980. True. You can imagine 1980 is how many years? 40 years, 42 years ago. That year was a time when every Kenyan was supposed to have had tap water in their houses. I see. We are getting to that. We have the Vision 2030, which is Kenya's development uh, plan. It's only eight uh, years away before we get to its uh, deadline. Would you say, with regards to the uh, sustainable development goal of having every Kenyan access clean and safe water, we are still likely to achieve that goal within that uh, uh, desired time frame of 2030. 2030 is a mirage, just as 1980 was a mirage. In fact, a book I have written called Why Things Won't Work in Kenya, I've said Vision 3020. You know, they forgot. <laughs> 2030, it was 3020. The rate at which we are going, even by the year 3020, we will not have achieved. It is not really. It's not, I mean, what are we doing? I see. Mm. I see. But should we probably increase our budgetary allocation towards uh, water management and water supply? Are we likely to get there within the eight years left? I've, I've tell, told you, you don't even need eight, eight years to give water to Kenyans. You just need a year. With all, and you don't need an extra money. No, by the way, you don't need an extra coin from what is being used in the water sector. All the billions we are eating through fake dam projects is more than you need. To give every home what in a year's time. One year, not two years. Sticking to that conversation that you're fronting, with regards to our water management authorities, you have so many of them, an area of them under the Ministry of Water and Irrigation. On a scale of 1 to 10, how will you measure their fiscal prudence with regards to uh, utilizing management for water resources? 1 or 0 to 10. There's nothing they are doing. They're just like any other prostitute. Cash cows? Yeah, just for people to eat money and you can't see what they are doing. All right. You, you get what I'm saying? I see. Because it is sad. You are saying we are about 50 million people, 48, they are about 50, 52. And you are saying we don't have water? With all this water, water bodies around us, with us here, Lake Victoria, Indian Ocean, some little process of removing salt, 
and pumping water with the flooding, killing Kenyans. What are you talking about? I see, sir. Right. Kenya uh, came up with a national industrial policy, which uh, typically uh, outlines how Kenya should industrialize uh, time after time. And under that wing, we actually have the manufacturing sector. Don't you see that there's a potential threat being posed to the manufacturing sector? Now, if we are going to still have issues of water rationing in urban centers, very few households and farms can access water in uh, desired quantities. Don't you see even as we are looking at towards the manufacturing goal, there's likely to be some uh, stumbling blocks in there? Certainly, certainly. We, water is, is critical to manufacturing. Uh, water, just as we, energy, you need water. Mm -hmm. You need other... other other things uh, for manufacturing. So if one critical thing like water is meeting, missing and electricity is as expensive as it is, then you are crippling manufacturing. I see. Yeah. Now that you've talked about uh, electricity, as Kenya, do you have an opportunity to invest in uh, research towards energy so that in the near future probably we look at uh, hydroelectric power generation and uh, go to a place whereby we're likely to have reduced cost of electricity and uh, cost of production from the very same water that we are blessed with. Yeah, you see, we have allowed was, ourselves to be slaves and uh, to be tied to a 19th G23, 25, 29 treaty, I can't remember the years, which was entered into by the British that for the sake of Egypt, you will not interfere with the waters of the Nile. And that means... Any river that goes to Lake Victoria. <laughs> so, here are water, water flows, rivers killing people <laughs> yeah? during floods. We cannot use them for, to generate electricity. We are forced to use seasonal rivers that dry. And power purchase agreements all over Ethiopians the place. Ethiopians have told the, the, the Egyptians you can go to hell. <clears throat> I see. Yeah, you can go to hell. We are thinking about our country. We are going to put up this dam, whether you like it or not. So even with us, we are not even putting up a dam. Just using the rivers that have year all around, water all around the year, that occasionally flood and kill and disrupt life. We tap that water and generate electricity. We can't even do that. I see. And I've told you always, we are Kenyans are jokers. We don't love ourselves. All right. Yeah. Very recently, we had the fifth edition of the United Nations Environmental Assembly at the UNEP headquarters, and in their issues of climate change were discussed. Now that we're talking about water, which is uh, closely pegged towards climate change, what do you say uh, with regards to in, uh, research, investment in research in climate change, we have really made commendable efforts? You know, researchers are doing their best. I work in a universe, and I know people are doing their best with the limited resources. So, and I'm sure elsewhere, there are researchers doing their best. But they are not being well supported. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can we as a country move into supporting these people? And the answer should be yes. When? Yesterday. If not today. Yeah, yesterday actually. Not today. So way back around 2011, 2012, you saw the initiative that was brought on board, the Kenyans for Kenyans. And uh, the issue that was affecting Assel counties was um, majorly around water. Civil society, human rights organization came up and piped water, did underground water sources uh, generation and so forth. However, when these NGOs left, even those facility infrastructure that were there, most of them dried up, they were never maintained. Is it a case that probably, now that you're trying to look at uh, water penetration in assaults, it was a case of uh, ignorance from those who are handed over the project, the devolved government, say in Turkana and Mandera, or it's a case of low community engagement when we are looking at addressing water? None of that. All those are schemes by people to eat. <laughs> they, they were eating the money. If you see the way they were accounting for the money, you just laugh. It is just eating the money. Come on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. you. You know, let me give you a story. Something was in the parliament. I don't know what it was. And somebody was, they were talking about 400 million shillings to be used in feasibility studies for water. Msila then. Uh, it's called some Musila man who was one senator of, of, of Kitui. Mm -hmm. Then he was an MP for Mwingi. Mwingi, one of those Mwingis. I think Mwingi, Mwingi North or whatever it is. Or Mwingi South. He said, you want to use 400 million <coughs> for feasibility studies? He said, give me that water and I will flood Mwingi and Kitui with water. Similar to a story, I was being interviewed by a guy, a lady from, from UK, 
together with somebody I think from BBC or something like that. This government was planning to use 700 million to study how to reallocate, reallocate people from Kibera or something like that. You, you know we are actually basically useless people. So, in short, I'm saying we can give water to those people without these shallow mm. shandy schemes people. Actually, Manjira, you get you get money, then you go and do some vegetable thing, then you pump some little water with <laughs> weak pipes. Then when they are even the sun alone, the, the the pipes burst, and then you go away. You have eaten the money. Are you trying to say that probably the six hundred million that has just been disbursed <laughs> to Manjira <laughs> County government, we are likely to come up with an, a story, a circus? Disbursed for what? Uh, dispatched for what? For water penetration, water accessibility, and availability. That's, it will not work because these people are going to follow that money and eat it. You have you need to have a master plan mm -hmm. of how to ensure there is sufficient water mm -hmm. for livestock, for human beings, for industries within the arid and semi-arid regions. And I'm telling you, if you give water to Mandera, Garissa, Wajia, Marsabit, all those counties, Isiolo, if you give them water for their animals. Water for human consumption, water for industries, because then you are going to, to process meat and meat products, hides and skins, and you manufacture shoes. I am telling you, if you give water to those counties, water alone, sufficient water, they can employ the entire country, employ. Nobody will look for a job elsewhere, they will all go be employed there because of value addition. The animal industry. They will employ each young man. And you know what? The sad bit. You don't even need the billions people are talking about in dams. My, my estimate is, just on top of my head, you don't need more than 200 billion. How much are we putting into dams? Much, much more than one, that. One With 200 billion, you can supply <coughs> sufficient water to Marsabit, Mandera, Garissa, Wajia, Isiol, all those counties. Lokitang and all this. And once you do that, once you do that, the kind of economic activity that will go on, the kind of benefit to the country in terms of GDP, in terms of employment, oh my God, you cannot begin to talk about it. Exports. All right, sir. Yeah. I'm a bit conflicted with what's happening in Nairobi. In actually, most of our urban centers where we already have an issue with water scarcity, but also those privileged to have access to water, the very few, or are having issues with the buy-in system whereby you get a water bill and probably it's uh, uh, inflated or undercharged and so forth. Would you say also for authorities such as Nairobi Water uh, Company and so forth, that it's high time probably they tighten loopholes with regards to water billing because it's really kind of nightmare to people who can't go to court and afford those uh, prosecution processes. You see, the people in charge of water are under the spell of cartels. Really? Yeah. So, the people who are supposed to give you water do nothing but work with the cartels. So all the energies, all the time, <clears throat> all the resources are spent working around how to embellish the cartels, how to help the cartels. So it's not a, a question of supplying water. Least of all, billing and checking that meters are reading the meters well, uh, correct bills. Their main preoccupation is how they make money with the cartels. In the water sector. I see. And that's why I've been saying NMAC. Buddy, you have done so much work. But look at this water cut. So long as those water bowsers, in fact, they have no respect for traffic rules. They are, they are worse than matatus. Ah, Magari, Akuza, Maji. And they're all over the place. They right? are worse than matatus. If you are driving with the water and you see one, please, Mwondoke, come ambulance. You will at a pita na wewe. They are law unto themselves. So long as those bowsers still control this town, there will never be sanity in the water sector in the, in the city of Nairobi. You must put an end. If I'm in charge today, not one of them will be on the road in 30 days. None of them, not one. I see. Look for me, do to me what you want. I'm an old man. None of you will sell those things to do other works. I couldn't and imagine it, water to it was on a lorry. Because they will ensure. <laughs> People, ask yourself, how come water in the Islands are, is flowing non-stop? Because those people don't have money to buy this water. They ensure people who don't get water are people who can afford to buy this water. 
I see. So they interfere with the flow of water eh? in the areas where people can afford to buy water. So those are perpetually buying water. All right. If you live in Karen, you need an infrastructure for water. Somebody coming to your home will think you are a water company. <laughs> Heavy tanks all over yes. the place and so forth. They can't do that in, 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 in Islands. I see. Go to Islands. Magic one there is going back to January up to December. All right. Yes. Second last, sir. Now that you're talking about water vending and particularly the issue of water bowsers, yes. there is an issue with regards to the uh, supply of contaminated water here in uh, urban uh, city. If you look at the water bowsers there, I, I, I believe and I know there are agencies that should inspect uh, how clean those vehicles are, how, where they're getting their water and where they're supplying and in what form. However, it seems that they are throwing away the rule book with regards to this. Who is in charge of tightening such? And uh, is it a an issue of just bare ignorance from both the citizens who receive this water or what? You know, for many years, I never used water from any other source. I never used boiled water because water, tap water is so original and so tasty. Everybody in my house knew my water direct from the tap. So nice, so tasty before <laughs> boiling. My friend, if what you happened? try that now, <laughs> you'll die. Why? Heavy metal Water is me. The pipes are meeting somewhere, mixing with sewage. You, <laughs> you know, you. I have told you the people, the main, the people mainly concerned with water, including the the, the, the purity of the water and so on and so forth. Yeah. Are busy working with the cartels to get money. So where, at which time do they have to know that there's and a bus, there's a bus type sewer next to? A, uh, they don't have. You that mean fifty nine years after independence, you can do that at the expense of human lives? It's not the only water that can, can kill you in this country. Even food imported <laughs> of loaded in Mombasa. If you, if, if you inspected the food that is entering this country at the port in Mombasa, my friend, yeah. you'll just leave this country. But the package tells a different story. Yeah, you'll leave this country. I see. The very last, sir. <laughs> Skeptics to your narrative will say that uh, the problem with uh, water in the country is because we are not tapping into the potential of using uh, agencies such as Kenya Defense Forces, National Service Machinery, mm -hmm. and taking them to, say, Mandera and Ijara, instead of us looking for donors and uh, loans from the World Bank and IMF to do water, water, water pumping and so forth, that we go into NYS and so forth, use our internal resources to do such. Do we have the space to do such? But you see, my friend... When we talk of the military, people jump up and say, who is militarizing the country? You see, and you are just saying they, they, have, they have facilities we can use. People say, we are militarizing the country. Number two, when you use the military and the use service to do work, where are you leaving the contractors? Where are you leaving the thieves? They will not be happy with you because they want you to allow them to do that and they steal the money. Because if military is given an assignment to drill boreholes, they will do exactly that. With the limited they will, money they will be given, they will not be, people will not allow that. And people can, want to be the ones to do the assignment. Billions are pumped there. Instead of 300 million, we have 80 billion. Just to wrap up, in short, yeah. you are signaling that we better have our military engineers stay at thicker barracks, our drilling systems to remain idle at the warehouses, at the expense of just people getting the water. No, no, I'm saying... The military all over the world <clears throat> do civil works. You it's it? the other way around. In America, there is the Industrialization, Industrialization Act, I think, something yeah, I have forgotten, and so forth. to make sure you, you can utilize the military in certain situations. The military in this country has been used to do things. We should step up that. That's what I'm saying. I see. Correct. All right, well, that takes us to the wrap of this conversation touching on the issue of water in the country and how pivotal such economic resources are and how we can best tap into the potential of having every Kenyan access clean and safe water, not just for household use, but also for industrial practices. For fun of the week, we go all the way to Seattle, America. We get a lady by the name of uh, Alisa Njeri. Alisa Njeri, thank you for being part of the family. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. I see. Well, get posted to African Proverb of the Day that comes to you right uh, after this on your screen. And make sure you get tuned to our subsequent editions that come to you every Monday and Thursday here on Haman Manyora Channel. Until next time, my name is Richard Mwanja. God bless and thank you for staying tuned.